deep in the Yorkshire hills, our five top dealers are ready and waiting. Including James, who trades in pre-1920s items. Mid-century specialist Lucy, alongside Tash, Ian and Moses. They are all ready to spend their own money, but have no idea what items they'll be bidding on today. It does make me think that you could pretty much bring anything you want in. It's worth discussing. It is. First to arrive is Lisa, who's hoping to sew up a good deal with her item. It's been imported from America, so I think it's quite unique. I've done a little bit of research on it, and I know they're quite collectible, so I would just like to have a value put on it today. Before entering the bidding room, all our sellers will have their items valued by expert Simon, who has more than 30 years' experience in the auction business. Hello. Hello. Lisa. Pleased to meet you. You bought in a tin. But it's not just a tin, yeah, is it's it? It's not just a tin, no. No. It's a it's tin not. that you found uh, where? America. Did you? Mm -hmm. Bought it about nine years ago. The story was I was after some industrial lighting making, but everyone thought I was mad in England after industrial lighting. So I got talking to a couple and they used to do all the yard sales in America. Okay. And that was one of the objects I picked up. And what did you pay mm -hmm. for it? I think I paid about £80 for did it. Did you? Mm -hmm. Let's now find out what exactly you bought. Right. So, I mean, what is this, Tim? Well, when Lisa was carrying it in, you know what I mean? I, I thought of cinema reel case. Oh, yeah, yeah. Didn't you? It looks like that. Well, sort it of does, it does. Old sort of Spoon. Hollywood yeah. cinema cases, but we can see what it is by the, the top. This is the important bit. We've got the company name there, the Boy Needle Company, formed in 1906, which ties in with our patent dates on the box here. And this probably would have been one of the first things the company actually came up with. And we can just see the remnants of Chicago, which is where they were. Yeah. We call it the rotary case. The interior is full of little compartments, all stacked with little bobbins and needles, etc. If you can imagine at that time, home sewing was the norm. We didn't really sort of buy a lot of clothes in stores. People would sort of make and mend at home a lot of the time. So spares was the important thing. And this is just brilliant with all this chart round the edge of all the different needles and bobbins and all the rest oh, of it. A lot of needles. Whoa. Oh, there were. You know, with fascinating names like New Florence and Falcon. And would they all have been in this tin? Yeah. So we've got the little sliding door there. And if you can see inside, oh, Nigel, yes. you've got all the little... Oh, you've got to ...all the little compartments. You have to close the, yeah. the lid and then that would spin round to your corresponding number. I want to go for... Pan American. Pan open. American. So open. you'd open, open that. And there it would be. Pan God, that's Pan amazing. Yeah. What it's a bit of kit. Yeah. Why did you buy it? I just liked it. Just liked the I thing. just liked it. I do interiors and I oh, just you liked do it. Interiors, I do, do yes, you? I have. Been on my wall at home for about the past eight or nine years. You hung it up as like a bit of art? I do, yes, I have. That's yeah. kind of a nice good idea. idea. Um, is it collectible? They are. Any sewing, and especially vintage sewing, is really nice and collectible at the minute. I love all this wear on there as well, Lisa. You know, I mean, that's... Proper vintage retro. It all adds to it, doesn't it? Is there many in circulation still, do you know? I, d I don't see a lot of them, simply because obviously they were made for the American market, uh -huh. and I would say probably 80, 90% of them stayed in America. And you paid 80 quid for it? I did, yeah. And what would you mm -hmm. like to get for it? Um, I was up in about the 100 mark. Okay, so you want a profit, really? I do, of course. Okay, Lisa, now is the time to ask that very, very important question. Which is? Do you want to ask him? I do. Okay. How much is it worth? How, How much is it worth? worth? She said. Spin the wheel of fortune. Where will it land? <laughs> it's good news. <laughs> it's good news. <laughs> no, you, you've got a, a lovely object. You really should gain interest from all the dealers in front of you. I think they will pay the hundred pound mark and maybe a little bit more if maybe. you push them. I like the maybe a little, little bit, bit more. more. And just. Play on the market, you've got sewing collectors, you've got tin collectors, advertising collectors. Lisa, thank you so much right. for bringing that thank in. Thank you very much. Very, thank very you. kind of you. I wish you lots of luck with it. Right, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. A bit of Americana. I like, I like that. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to going in to meet the dealers now, especially with the bit of information I've been given off Simon. And bring it on, can't wait. So Lisa heads off to haggle with the dealers. 
Her needle and shuttle case could well interest Tash, who loves fashion-related items, or industrial expert Moses. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good, Hi. thank you. Hi. Excellent. Good. Ooh, wow. Let's have a look at this. Mm. So, this looks uh, very interesting. Ooh, is it missing something? It, 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 it looks like from the back of film, doesn't it? No. It's something to do the back. with sewing. Yeah, shuttles. needles and shuttles. It's a shop fitting. Ooh. You think it's a shop fitting, or would it have been in a factory? Yeah, I'm thinking more factory. Where there would have been ladies or men, probably more likely ladies in those days, I working would... at different machines, and then. I, I think it's shop fitting. And if somebody Smidgens. came into your shop and said, "I want a needle or certain size of some whatever." You've got a display item, and then surely by opening that... Lovely front dial, very decorative. It's saying patented 1906, so I think it's probably a little bit later than that, but not a great deal. I think it's for dispensing needles and shuttles. Yeah, That's so what it says on the tin. It is what it says on the tin, yeah. exactly that. Needles and shuttles that went in the hardware stalls, and you put the name on the rotary. Yeah. And what needle you wanted out, spun it round to there. Took the needle and shot her out. I should imagine over the years a lot of these were probably like decayed or destroyed. Yes. Yeah. Because they're kind of a, not a flimsy as such, but do you know what I mean? It's not a heavyweight mm. item, so it's nice that it's survived. Sewing is definitely having a resurgence. There's a massive craft movement. Everyone's getting back to making things by hand. Um, what did Simon say about the market? Um, we think it's a very collectible piece and just the great quirky piece to go on the wall. I it think it's look, great. It would look great with other round things, like a round mirror, a clock, and then that. I just love the patina on it as mm. well, the wear and tear on it. Just love it. Yeah. Um, do you know what you could probably use this for now? Oh, I'm just looking at them and the size of the holes. You probably get some lipsticks in there. <laughs> Massive <Sure>. collection. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Just be like, which colour today? <laughs> I think we've had a lot of fun with this, haven't we? We have. Oh, yeah. I think it's time to do a bit of bidding. OK. The needle and shuttle case is a great collector's piece. It seems to have intrigued Ian, who likes trading in unusual items. So can Lisa encourage him or any of the other dealers to buy for more than the £100 valuation? I'm going to put a spin on this oh. and start with £20. I'm going to do a double spin with 40 I'm going to round it up to 50. And I'm going to give everybody the needle <laughs> and go 60. That's the dad joke's done. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get the shuttle out of here oh. and say I'm out. <laughs> it's needling me, so I'm out. <laughs> it's just getting worse. <laughs> Can we get back to on point okay. now, guys? Yeah, we've lost the thread. Oh, oh God. <laughs> 65? Nope. I just think it'll appeal to quite a few different markets. 70 pounds. Nope. Yeah, I know, I'm afraid at that, mar at that rate, sorry. Right. Thank you. Tempted, Tash? I'm out, sorry. 80 pounds. <laughs> OK, so you've obviously turned down the £80. That's no good. So how about if I threw £90 on the table? I'd say it needs rounding up. <laughs> so I'm a close? You're getting closer. So do I want to go to £100 or not? Do I? Don't I? I'm going to stick on £90. No, no. Not willing to let it go for that. If I give you £100, would you take it? Go on, then, not a push. Yay! 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, love. Well done. So, what was Simon's valuation of this? 100 or just over? Okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh-huh. 80. A hundred pounds. Thank you very well, much. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. I love the tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was a great experience. They were all a great friendly bunch, and Sam was spot on with his valuation, and Ian paid the £100 just as I wanted, so this is going to be my son's 18th birthday fund. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Have you got a customer in mind already? No, but I'll find one. 
it's just a good fun thing, isn't it? And it would be great to go to somebody who's still, you know, in the trade, mm. Mm. doing Definitely. traditional. Because, you know, as you said, this craft idea is all coming back, isn't it? Mm. Yep. Next up is Lorraine, with an item she hopes will set the dealer's hearts all of a flutter. I bought the item off a friend who lives in France. I'm really excited to, uh, to meet the expert. It's a beautiful item. Oh, something has. Look at this. Oh, my, my eyes, my eyes. <laughs> Heavens above. What have we here? Well, that's lovely. Very intriguing. So tell me all about this little object you brought in today. To my experience and my knowledge, it's a globe de merier. Uh, from the Napoleonic era. It's a place to keep a momentum of your it is. wedding day. Yes. We purchased a house in France ten years ago and I've seen them in the Braconts and I've adored them for years. Um, and then a friend of mine who lives in France actually had this one for sale and... Um, you bought it? I couldn't resist. What did you pay for it? I think it was about 140 euro, maybe a little bit more. Euro, which is yes, about 110 yes, pounds. Something like that. Yeah. This actual shape is quite unusual um, okay. because it's normally the the dome the shape. Dome. Yeah, exactly. Yes. I haven't actually seen this shape of case before. Mm. It almost reminds you of a, the, a bureau shape, doesn't yes, it? It does. That mm. cylinder shape. Yes. It's sealed. Just you can't get into it. You can no, you can through the yes. back. Yeah. Yes. The back. Oh, We've got uh, obviously that's how you got the items in and, um, right. and, yes, and, and put them in like that. And what would you do? You sit on a dressing table in the in the, in the bride's in the boudoir, my darling. In the boudoir. In the boudoir. <laughs> <laughs> Just to remind you of the vows you made. Yes, yes. So there's always a, a Don't reason forget for it. it. Don't forget yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> French is, is 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 spot on because this kind of cabinet, this kind of display dome, mm. originated in France. You know, in the 1800s. That's when it sort of started, mm. and it was meant to keep wedding mementos. Quite often the veil or something like mm. that, and lots of little bits and bobs. I like the feet actually. They're very French in style, aren't they? This actually just be a pierced, very thin sheet of brass, oh. which is then lacquered. And they've added a bit of colour, Nigel, too, haven't they? You can see almost like a, yes. a rose tint yeah. to it there, yes. can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They must have been quite obviously quite personal to the to the couple they were yes. made for or presented to. Mm. It's difficult to date. I mean, there's some bits, these look quite sort of period to me around about sort of 1900-ish, that yeah. kind of date. Mm. But then again, when I look at the backboard, to me that Maybe looks later, it, doesn't yeah. it? To me, look more sort of mid-20th mid, mid 20th century, to be honest. Collectible? Yes. I mean, e even if you wanted to adapt it for using as something else, as a, as, as a display, itself. little display case, you can see another, another purpose for it for that. How much do you hope to get for it? It has to be 300 for me to actually... That would, that would make you waver. They're going to have a fight on the hands. Oh, OK. Is these which, dealers, which, you When know. you go into that room, you, it's mm -hmm. best to have, you know, which dealers we should target. So we've got Tash, because of that interior design kind of aspect. Ian, because it's wacky. James as well. It's, it's, it's difficult, really. Their mind will be focused on who is going to buy it off them. Yes. So if they see it and I think, oh, I know so-and-so will buy yes. that off me, mm -hmm then you're away, aren't you? Yes. Lorraine, I think we've learned everything we can about this gorgeous little piece. Thank you. It's time to ask that very important question, which is, Simon, what is it worth? What is it worth? Mm. I think the dealers will either love it or they won't see an outlet for it. I think they'll all have a go at it to a certain point. My feeling is that you'll probably be that 100, 150 bracket, mm. but that's where you come in. Right. That's where you come in. Fingers crossed. Well, Lorraine, we have to draw a veil over the 100 yes. and move on to 200. Maybe. We do. We and do. I think I wish least. you the very best of luck. Thank you very much for being here. And just go and dazzle them with this mm. gorgeous right. little dazzle, book. Dazzle, dazzle, spark, Thank spark. you very much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Best of luck. His valuation was a lot lower than what I expected, and I will be giving the dealers a run for their money. So Lorraine heads to the bidding room. She's confident her item will appeal to the dealers and convinced she can sell for more than Simon's valuation. Hello. Hiya. Hi there. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. Wow. Oh, wow. What's, What's going on here? There? 
And so, what's your name? My name is Laureen. We're going to have a little look at um, this. Looks like some sort of like a head thing or a corsage of some sort. Looks like an Easter egg to me. I don't think it's. Does it? About... You've got funny Easter eggs. It's about this, isn't it? The flor flowery thing. I thought it was a bit of Victoriana, but I think it's later. So the little thing that That's looks like bad. an Easter egg is actually more of a stand, isn't it? It's like a little tiara headband. Mm. This with the um, handmade flowers and a bit of the um, netting. It looks wedding so it's related. It's like a, a headpiece, yes. Oh, it's a wedding... Wow, go on, have a... Gear, headgear yeah. for a wedding. Um, we've got these little ceramic flowers. Which is really unusual to see some ceramic flowers on there. Yeah, the box, now this is getting just wafted under my nose very quickly. I think the box is later than that. Looks custom made, doesn't it? Yeah, the sides are, are certainly, certainly much, much later than that piece there. But I mean, it fits well. Has it always been in that yes. box? Yes. By looking at it, it looks uh, wedding related. It's from France. Is it? Yes. So about the 40s? It looks like more 50s, 60s to me, by the looking at the box and the, the wood, wood looks like mahogany it's stained ply oh is it yeah it looks like we're a little bit lost on this one so tell us what you know about it um it's actually called a globe de marier and what does that um, translate to in english it translates as a marriage globe they date back to the napoleonic era this okay. one wow. isn't actually I'm told that uh, that old. Originally, the bride would go and have this bespoke cabinet made for her. Yeah. Um, to display her headdress, as you were saying, the wedding headdress, which is what's in there. OK, so what age is this? Mid-20th century. Do you know, it reminds me of a very typical Victorian curio, cos they used to do a lot of things under mm. domes, didn't they? Which they didn't did. make a lot of sense, but they were pretty and, you know, very eclectic. Once you take out the, the interior, you yeah. could actually put anything in there. I think it would look fantastic in a, in a wedding shop. Yes. To, yeah. to, as to, a display. You know, yeah. As display and to yes. show the history. This is absolutely unique. Never seen anything like it. Thank you. There have got to be some people out there that would absolutely love to buy this. Mm -hmm. And it's just vintage all over. So I'm going to start the bidding. The French wedding globe seems to be intriguing the dealers, but it's a very specialist item that none of them have come across before. So can Lorraine sell for anywhere near the 100 to 150 pound valuation? 20 pounds. <gasps> no, cheeky. I'll bid you 25 pounds. No. Put an art on that. I'm not going to add a knot, but I will bump it up slightly to £50. Pounds. No. Whoa! No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you don't even like it, I do don't, you? Not no, not really. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. I like you, though. Thank you. Oh, thank you. But I can't bid Merci on it. Merci beaucoup. So what about you, Ian? I do pride myself in having a go and trying to buy anything or everything yeah. that I've never seen or have seen. But sometimes I've got to draw the line and I don't know where to go with it. I'm going to say... I'm actually going to say I'm out. I yeah. do like it and I love you to bits. I love it to bits, but I can't <laughs> do it. <laughs> I'm gone. It's a little bit too vintage genalia for me. Yeah, fine. I'll offer you £70 for it. No. Wow. For me, you've brightened up my day, and I thank you for that. Thank Unfortunately, you. I'm out. OK, no problem at all. OK, so at the moment, it's £70. No, I'm not budging. No, no. No, I paid a lot more for it. And I do the market fluctuates, but. Um, it's no. one of those things I think you've got to have just the market to place it, to be fair. Yes. Just because we haven't got there. Yes. How much did uh, Simon value? Uh, Simon said from £100 to £150. OK. So no pressure here yes. at all. Then, unfortunately, You're out. we don't have a deal at the moment, oh. so I'm oh. out. But you are lovely. Can Actually, I give you a hug? Of course you can. That would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Such can a we wonderful all, can night. We all get a hug? Please! Come on. Let's have a group hug. <laughs> the dealers were a great set of people, but they, there was no deal because they couldn't cough up what I wanted for it, and I'm not, uh, I'm not bothered about that because I love the item, and it will go back on my dressing table where it belongs. So. Thank, Thank you bye, very bye. much, Lorraine. Take care, Lorraine. Au revoir, Lorraine. Au revoir. Bye. Au revoir. I got educated on what that was. I've never seen that before. No, me neither. That was truly 
bonkers in my opinion, but what an amazing lady. She was Ooh. lovely. She was. Fantastic. Cracking. Next up is Dan, with an item he hopes will float the dealer's boats. It's a heavy object, dated around the 1950s, I think. I'm hopeful of finding out a little bit more about it today and also hopeful of selling it. Dan, nice to meet you. Come and sit down, make yourself at home. Thanks very much. And tell me all about, um, about, um, wait a minute, don't tell me. Uh, about, um, a bit of wood <laughs> shaped yeah. as a boat on wheels. Mm. Oh, odd thing. Tell me about it. I think it's an arc. Um, I've had it for about 10 years. I bought it from a, a bric a brac store myself. And you paid for how much? Probably no more than £20, I wouldn't imagine. Okay. I had it on display, but um, an expanding family meant an expanding house, which meant, meant goodbye to my shed. And slowly I've been parting with my items, and this is one of the last ones oh, I have. You've saved this up to last. Indeed. You don't know quite exactly what it is, do you? No. no. Um, for some reason, I've got it in my mind that it might be an educational toy. Okay. I, okay. I don't know if that's He's the case. making noises that you could be right. I think you're quite. Simon, good what does this do? Why I wanted to look underneath is to find any indication of a maker. Now we've got E.J. Arnold of Leeds. So E.J. Arnold was quite rightly a maker of educational ah. toys. They were quite famous for doing um, abacuses. Yeah, and, we um, like those. wooden jigsaw. Yeah, we love, we love those. And, uh, and, and things like that. And yeah, I go with teak because it's really dense and really heavy, actually, isn't it? Okay. How could you? Yeah, oh, God, that's a heck of a well, weight. Okay, isn't so it? boys and girls, this is the ark. Is that how? We... Ah, aha. Uh -huh. Maybe there was a little you could put animals in it. And well, we, we've got holes, haven't we? So yeah. I'm thinking there maybe a figure would have slotted in there. Noah. Noah. I can see some fixing holes yeah. there, Nigel, yeah. can't you? As if perhaps there was a little rail around And there. here, there's a back bit. That was, so, yes. and, a, and a front bit. I think you've got a part of an educational toy. OK. Mm. Simon, can you date this piece um, of wood? Well, if, if, if we look at the wheels, mm. I mean, we've got plastic middles there, plastic spokes, so you're going to say, what, 1980s, 1990s? Yep. But the wheels might have nothing to do might with Might have it. nothing to do. I mean, there might have been replacement ones, yeah. likewise with, with the casters front and back. These don't seem to be at the same period. I don't know what you think. No, they're more like sort of, well, not shopping trolley, but that kind of yeah. more industrial kind of uh, Well, it's caster. like the thing you get at um, the airport. <laughs> yeah, the, the luggage trolley. Yeah. Yeah. The wheels always do this with me. <laughs> I always get the one that makes a terrible noise. You know, when you go to see these dealers, it's good to be armed with all the information you can possibly get. In your case, it's, it's, it's not going to be easy because it's, we don't quite know. We, we think it's educational. OK. Mm. It's made of some very, very heavy wood. Well, we keep saying, don't we, look at the piece and think what it can become. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say lamp base again. Are you? Yeah, you yeah know, I suppose incredible. Because could. it's sturdy enough. Yes. Get, get rid of the casters, get rid of the wheels. I mean, the wood alone would cost you a fair bit of money. Yes, it would. It? You paid uh, how much for it? I wouldn't have paid any more than 20 20 pounds. quid? Yeah. Well, you're starting from a nice low figure, so that's, you know, that's good. And what would you like to make from it? I was hoping for 50 pounds for it. OK, Dan, now is the time to ask that question. Simon, how much do you think it's worth? Oh, yes, well, I think you've got an item with potential, and that's what I hope the dealers will look at. It's an age now where we're looking at antique and collectibles and thinking what we can turn them into. But I don't, honestly don't think you've overpaid for it. I, I can see you making a little profit, but it's in that 20 to 40 bracket, you know, so... I can't wait. Dan, what do you think? That's not bad. Not no. bad, no. no. Thank you very much yeah. for bringing Thanks it in. Thanks very, very, very much. Thank you, you. brilliant. Thank I, um, you. Are you going to manage to take... I am. Oh, yeah. I'll be OK. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Good luck much. with that. Thank Best of luck, Thanks, man. guys. Thank you. After meeting with Simon, um, probably a little bit disappointed with the valuation. It's not worth as much as I'd hoped to get today. But I've learned a lot more about the item, so overall, I'm happy. So it's time for Dan to enter the bidding room to try for the best possible deal. Could the wooden toy arc appeal to either Lucy or Moses, who both have a passion for mid-century items? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? All right. How are you doing? I'm OK, thanks Excellent. very much. This looks good. There we go. Wow. Oh, oh yes. Looks like a boat comes skateboard. 
here, and there's three holes for something oh, that's not there. Um, it's pine. No, it's not. It's teak. 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 It's got teak squeaming. It's got that. It's quite heavy, quite heavy. so heavy. yeah, it may be. E.J. Arnold, Leeds, England. So that must be the maker. There's a, a rope would have gone in the hole here, I imagine, to pull it along. For some reason, I don't know why, but E.J. Arnold is ringing a bell, but I don't know why, I can't mm. think. Is it a pull-along toy or is it something else? Uh, the maker, E.J. Arnold, makers of educational toys, and it, I think it is teak. Um, Do you reckon it would have had sales? Looking at the holes, I think probably yes. Yeah. There's a few other holes, smaller holes, which would suggest that maybe it had a, maybe a rail going round or maybe even something on top of that yeah, originally. Possibly. I've always known it as an arc. But, um... Yeah, it has got that look, isn't it? Sort of an arc look. I don't think the animals went in two by two, though, on that. I think the wheels went on two by two, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah it's quite good for, like, passing stuff down a table, you know, you could put something... Yeah, there. That's there you go. So, how long have you had this and where did you get it from? I've had it for about ten years okay. and I got it from a local bric-a-brac store. OK. It's been very much a decorative piece that okay. I've enjoyed, but it's, it's, it's time for it to go, I think. Yeah. So, Dan, what did Simon say about the date of this? He said it could be from the 1980s or 1990s, judging by the wheels, but I think uh, the style of it, the, the amount of wear it's got on, I think is earlier than it that. It is earlier. I'm thinking it's more late 60s, early 70s. It, because it's a bit made up, it's hard to say what the market would be for it. I mean, obviously, you've got... People may want it for parts. They might break it down and use different parts, or they might just use this part for something else, or they might restore it and find the other parts for it, or, you know, you could repurpose it into something else. You want, you really want that to open, don't you, for it to do something? Simon said that it could be possibly upcycled, made into maybe a lamp. Yeah. To wheel the lamp along the floor. Yeah. It's not necessary to my taste, but... He said there's a potential for that, for that to mm. be done. Door stop. It's heavy enough. Yeah. It's heavy enough. Oh, yeah. Mm. I think you could use it for a, a planter in yeah. the garden. All right. OK. Let's go on with the bidding, guys. Yes, let's bid. The dealers are musing over how Dan's toy arc could be adapted so they can sell it on at a profit. But they're keeping their cards close to their chest. So Dan may have to bargain hard to sell for the 20 to £40 valuation. Ten pounds. Fifteen. I can do twenty. I'm sitting back on this one. It's it's good, but I'm out. But thanks. Yeah, I would just keep wanting to open it. So you do, don't you? that's frustrating me. So I'm out. I'm sorry. My God. It's missing too many bits for me. I'm really sorry. It would be a project. So I'm now out. So, twenty pounds on the table. It's old. That's a lot of money. Should make it worth my while for coming. Twenty pound on the table, cash in your hands. Could we get to thirty pounds, and I'd walk Go away. Come on, Moses. Twenty-five, and we have a deal. I'm happy that I've got my £25, and although I did originally want 50 the price I settled at is fine by me. So tell us, what did Simon value this uh, item at? £20. Bang on then. Brilliant. There you go. Very now run! Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, that very well. In all honesty, I'm relieved that I haven't got to carry that huge object home, and I shall use that money to take the kids to the cinema but they won't be getting any pick and mix. Bye. 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 Here comes the art. No, it's no longer an art, it is now. A dolly skate. <laughs> Actually, if you, if you sand that a bit, You're Moses, it could, fantastic. it could look really good. Moses, why don't you sit on it and wheel you, it around? It could be a it? nice little seat, You need to it? test out the weight Go strength. And, and I'll, I'm happy to sit on it. Push Come on, man. Steady, <laughs> steady. <laughs> <laughs> Last into the bidding room is Pam, with an item she hopes 
would have the dealers chomping at the bit. It's quite unusual. I would say you could use it for keep fit, as well as possibly other things too. Got a rough idea what I want for it, but we shall see what the value is say. A horse, a horse. <laughs> My king. <laughs> a horse. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm Pam. Hello, Pleased to meet Pam. you. Pam, lovely to meet, you. to meet you. I'm not sure, I have to be honest with you, this brings back memories, and I'm not sure I want the memories <laughs> back. <laughs> it's of my prep school. Yes. On a Saturday afternoon, we had to do P, you know, PE and all that, mm -hmm. and something very similar would loom into view as I mm. went into the room. I do remember having to leap across these. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't mm. my favourite thing. <laughs> <laughs> could all go badly wrong on one of these, really, couldn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 So, in a way, it's nice to see a really original <laughs> one. I think we know what it is. Yes. Well, yes, you're quite right. It's a pommel horse. Mm. Is that or a very large cigar for a giant? Mm. Mm. How did you get hold of this? It actually belongs to a friend of mine. I've come on her behalf. Oh, OK. Um, she originally bought it to make it into a stool to go underneath the breakfast bar, so you could basically get three people to sit on it. Oh, I see. OK. Yeah. Um, you just yeah. have to lower it, though. It, well, it does lower down. Oh, it, it does, does go it, lower down, would yes. Would it lower down to the right height, do you think? Um, it's, I think you still have to sort of like hike yourself up onto it, a bit like you do on a normal yeah. bar stool. But that's what she wanted to do, but she decided against it. No, she's moved. Um, oh, she's moved. Okay. Um, it, there's nowhere for it to go. But lovely to see one in... Such original condition. I love all this leather stitching on the handles here as well. They're fantastic. That's fantastic. And the colour you've got there, Nigel, yeah. that's only from hands, isn't it? Yeah. Over the years. And as Pam says, you've got the four legs there, all adjustable, aren't they? So they you are, yes. adjust you can that move to it different heights. Lower, yes. So depending on how cruel you were as a teacher, <laughs> you could make it harder or easier. Mine were cruel, yep. <laughs> and then this is like a suede, Pam. It's, yeah, it's suede, yeah. yeah. It feels really Real nice. It's suede, yeah. isn't it? All stitched there with a sloping front, as you'd expect. And in excellent condition. This, I feel, is original. Mm -hmm. That's the original covering. I don't think that's been replaced at all. To be honest, I can't see anything that's been replaced. Just down there, there it is. H. Hunt and Son of Liverpool. Ooh. So they were the maker. Ah. Yeah. And most of their stuff came out mid 20th century so sort of 1940s 50s that's where i'd place it date wise collectible that's a difficult <laughs> one. That's a, well we're, we're going back again aren't we to what what can you use it for in in today's mm. yes that's today's the thing. yeah society. yeah absolutely it's great and i think that uh, sort of breakfast bar seating yeah, yeah. Is, is a good idea and do you know what she paid for it i think she paid about 200 pound for it 200 pounds yes has she told you what she wants for it um she's would like to get her money back, but I think she'll go as well as 100 because it's okay. just, no. there's no space for it. He's called Bob. He's oh, called Bob. Yeah, Bob the, name. Bob Bob. the Pommel Horse. Bob. <laughs> Pam, why don't you ask that question to Simon? So, what's it worth? <laughs> what are we going to get for good old Bobby? When you go in the dealer's room, push the fact that it's all original. You've got the Hunt and Son of Liverpool maker's mark on it. Nice, adjustable piece. And just sell the retro vintage vibe. I think you can confidently push them to... 120, 150. Hey, cool. Now, that's not that's bad, good. actually. That's OK. Have you sold one of these before? Actually, the only ones I've sold actually have been slightly later than this, more modern mm. ones. And, you know, they, they can do that sort of money. OK, yeah. Pam, get in there and jump the price up... Definitely. ..to as much as you can for your... Definitely. Thank you so much Thank for bringing you. it Thank in. You very, very, very kindly. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, I, I think this is... Oh, steady on. Oh. Tell you. We should quite have a drink like this. <laughs> Way to service. Yes. There you go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I was a bit disappointed with Simon's valuation because I thought it would probably be a little bit more than what he said. I'm nervous about meeting the dealers, but I'm going to get them to maybe have a go on it, maybe push that price a little bit higher than what it's been valued at. So Pam heads off to take on the dealers. The vintage pommel horse could well catch the eye of both Tash and Ian, who love to buy and sell unusual and unique pieces. Here comes Pam. Hello, Hi. Pam. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, Hi Pam. Pam. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Do you have any idea? Uh, any idea at all? No. no. Oh, come on. Kind of. Is it a sideboard? 
the cyborg. Oh! oh. How about that? Oh, oh, oh. That is... Yeah, that is tremendous. Oh, my God. Watch your trousers! Yes! A riding bull! <laughs> How about that? It's not the Olympics, love. No, no, <laughs> it's pretty good, though. She's got a story. Careful, Nigel. You know, I've got Nigel. a story. You're just such a sweet That's bunch of guys. We are. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, have fun. Thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Over to you. you Thank remember you. what we said? Yes. What? Yeah, OK. It's in a mile. OK, very good. <laughs> yes. Bye, guys. Wow. We're in for an hard sell now. Wow. Pam, yeah. so tell me, how come do you have one of these? Well, this is Bob. Bob. He got called Bob. Okay. I'm actually selling him on behalf of my friend. And she was going to originally use it as, a, like, a breakfast bar stool. It is really comfy to sit on. Are you sure? I'm not it is. Sure. No, it is. It's no, really, I'm going to have to try and sit on it. Once you get a it... Can I sit yeah. on it? Yeah, because it does actually raise up and it goes smaller. It... Oh, it does it? I'm yeah. worried. I'm going to fall, fall down the back. Oh, God. <laughs> it is quite comfy. Oh, it's actually... I'd take it yeah. back. It is comfy to sit on. Oh. Is it called a vault? It's yes. a pommel horse. Yeah. A pommel horse. A pommel horse. A pommel horse. Bob the pommel Is pommel anybody horse. really good at using this at school? I oh, like to book. Brilliant. Brilliant. I, I think you should show <laughs> that. I think you should be the one that has a go. I'm amazing. I, you can tell. Oh. Perfect for push-ups. Moses, go on. Show us go how on, it's done. Show how it's do done. Do I have to? Yes. 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 Can you do I that swingy thing where you swing around it? Yeah. Get your leg over. <laughs> do it. Do it. I am genuinely worried. Okay, if I remember rightly, it's a long time ago. Next. Have a go. <laughs> just feel the sway because it's. Can really you go nice. that way as well? You can, yeah. Oh god! Go on. <laughs> yeah. Jump over Bob. Go, go on, Bob. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> oh my oh, god! god. Well, done. <laughs> well done! Well done! <laughs> <laughs> You're right, James. <laughs> Jeez. See, you put yeah. the ball to Shane. You actually went the hardest way. All right, there you go. I was a little bit worried you might never have another oh. child. It's a gym school issue, uh, probably around about 1950s. I have actually sold quite a few of them. It's a fun piece, and it's, it's got quite a lot of uh, wide range of people that would want to buy it. It's height adjustable. How is it? Is it adjustable on the legs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, see I didn't see that. the metal things here. You just pull out. You pull them up and then you go up to a certain... So it'll it's... drop down yeah. about, what, sort of six yeah, inches? Yeah, I mean, you can, so. we, we actually took the legs off. I'm just thinking of usability, that's all. Ah. Yeah. yeah. What else do you know about it? Um, it's all got its original features. It's still... It's not been altered anyway. It's leather, the suede. It's yeah. the legs, even down to the metal bits at the bottom, that's all original. Um, it was made in Liverpool by Hunter and Son. And like I said, you was right around about 1950s. Uh, yeah, it was a gym equipment, yeah. but I see past that. I don't see a gym equipment. I see a bar you can lean against. It can sit in a shop window. Yeah. Perfect for a sports bar. You mm. could make a tape, put a, a top on it and make it into a table. It's a perfect feature for somewhere. This is what's yep. happening with all this old stuff now, exactly, isn't it? Yes, it's all yeah. usability yeah. again now. Definitely, I think the, the, yes. the last one I had, I actually sold to a bar. Yeah, yeah. The back room, yeah. Or in a gym, it could go in the front of a gym. Gym would be cool, actually. They do make them now, but they're a lot smaller. Mm. Um, yeah. They've not got the handles on like this one has. No, the handles I like the most. The wear yes. on them is lovely. Yeah, they're nice, aren't they? Really nice. It's a good looking piece. I think we all quite like it, so we should start the bidding and I think we'll all be involved. The dealers all seem interested in the mid century pommel horse, including James. He usually trades in pre-1920s items. So can Pam persuade him or any of the others to match Simon's 120 to 150 pound valuation? I'd like to start it at 50 pounds. 55. 70. 80. 90 pounds. You know you like it. I'd go 100. It's definitely worth a lot more than 100. 110. See, he likes it more. I can see in his eyes he likes it a lot more than 110. Do you want another go? <laughs> Are you sure? I've, I've owned a few of them. And uh, it's a little bit more than I feel comfortable paying. So I think I'm out. For my market, I'm going to find it really difficult, so I'm not going to bid any more, Pam. OK. I think James needs it more than me. I'm out. 
one thirty. No. Like you know you want it. <sighs> sure you're not gonna let him beat you on this last bit. <laughs> 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 You don't seem like a man that would quit, please. <laughs> Persuasive, isn't she? Mm. It's because I know it's brilliant, that's why. 140. Ugh. I'm going to say I'm out, and I think it's down to you, James. So, is 140 going to be enough for Bob the Pommel Horse? Deal. Good. Thank you well very much. Done. Well done. Thank you very much. Well played, Thank you. Thank you, Jam. Oh, please tell us. What was it actually valued at? 120 to 150. Yeah, well, well done. Well, yeah. well yeah. done. It was amazing. I managed to sell it for 140 pounds, which was brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Fabulous. Well done, you guys. You. I think my friend will be really happy with it. She's going to probably put it to home improvements because she's moved into a new house, hence why he had to be sold. Um, but it's, it's really good. Hopefully, I might get a takeaway out of it, too. It's going to pass out in a minute. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I can't James, I think you need it. to use this more often. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I think you're going to have to practice on it. Take it home. <laughs>